I want to look particularly at a photograph. I had the privilege of working with two groups uh, during the active involvement, but I want to start with Aaliyah and um, Victor. And they have, so if you had the puppy picture and the kitty picture, I think William, your group did, um, they had, this was their picture, so you're all looking at it, and they had to come up with two logical events that could happen after that photograph was taken. And it wasn't as simple as Sebastian, they thought it was going to be. They had to sit there and in their conversation, they did some, they did some thinking, which I really appreciated. They said, you guys want to say it for me? Tell them what you said about um, what you thought about the cat and the dog laying on the rug together. Um, we thought that they did it before since if they did it before, they would do it again and if, and if they did it and they didn't like it, the dog would be barking at the cat and wouldn't like it. So doesn't that make sense? They said the dog and cat are lying here peacefully. So then they thought to themselves, this has obviously happened before because if it was the first time and one of the animals wasn't comfortable with it, they wouldn't be lying there peacefully. So I thought that made a lot of sense. They were actually thinking of before. So then, Victor, why don't you tell us one thing that your group came up with? Because you had some, two things that could happen after the dog and cat were laying there peacefully. Oh, that the dog would get up and go to his bowl. The dog would get up and go to his food bowl. They're not going to stay on the mat forever in harmony and joy and love. So one of them might get up and go to the food bowl, and that makes sense to me. That makes sense logically. And Aaliyah, why don't you read us the second thing that you came up with? What could happen after? Um, that the um, that the cat might stay on the on the on the um, bed that they're laying on. <coughs> Bless you. Oh, oh, that the cat might stay on the dog dog's bed and lay down. Could because maybe the dog might have left and ate his food and probably went to walk around and didn't want to get on there anymore. Yeah, and cats are pretty lazy, aren't they? So, they? so they thought, logically, the cat might just lay there. Okay? William, who are you with, William? Carlos. They had before, they had the same photograph, but they had to think of two events that could have happened prior to dog and cat being on mat. What did you guys come up with? Um, that uh, the dog, like, probably snuck up on the track on the cat and he and the cat doesn't really notice the dog. Okay, so they're th thinking uh, the dog maybe just, that kind of looks like kind of a lazy laid back dog to me, William. Maybe the dog just kind of meandered his way up there and laid down and the cat just doesn't care. Right? Is that what you were thinking? That makes sense to me. Um, we started with a lesson on Friday and I like to um, scaffold my lessons and so we started really simply with comic strips and I cut up the comic strips and we talked about you know they've learned different strategies in earlier grades up to fourth grade on how to sequence events um, but I'm trying to really get them to think outside the box and to think about things that could happen before the words on the paper or after the words on the paper so we started simply with just visuals, just comic strips and just few words and um, they did a great job and they looked for what made sense and what didn't make sense because in order it's got to make sense and then so today I took it one step further and then they had to come up with, I think when they have to think and it's not written for them in black and white, where they have to come up with ideas that happened before a photograph and then after a photograph, I think that really broadens their deep deepens their thinking abilities. And so what you're going to be asked to do for your exit ticket, for your independent work, is I'm going to give each one of you, you worked in partnerships for the active involvement, for your exit ticket, you're going to be given a photograph and you're going to come up with two events that could happen prior to the photograph being taken and two events that could happen after the photograph was taken. And then you're going to turn it into Constandi's. No, actually, I just want you to hold on to it. I'll col collect it at the end, but we'll need them for closing. We'll need them for sharing during our closing meeting. Okay? Let me tell you who's who. Uh
We have a room full of divergent thinkers in here, and um, there's a lot of different ways to answer one particular question, and I want them thinking about that. I want them going out into life knowing that there's not just one right answer. And when you look at an image or when you look at something, you, you have to look at it with lots of different glasses on. Thank you, love. Let's talk about the image that we see before we even start getting our brains thinking about before and after. Well, me and Aaliyah saw the little cracks on the um, car, which um, looked so like if it was a crash, if the car, the car accident. accident. Okay. I think um, a really, really, really big car hit it because to the damage to the car, it looks like a lot, so I probably influence that a big car hit it really bad. I like how you used the word inference, Chris, and you thought that a large car would have to do that amount of damage. It couldn't have been a smaller I car. Think, um, I think um, it was a big damage, like they say, but since it was an emergency truck, I think the guy got really hurt, so he's going to the hospital getting, um, getting um, better to see what happened. Okay, so you've inferenced that because of the ambulance in the photo, someone's been injured. Traffic. I know you're not drivers, but with that amount of traffic backed up, what can you infer about that accident? That it was it was a very very um, hard hit, so they had to keep all the cars back, like it could have spun or something. Okay, the car could have spun. I think maybe it's because you're not familiar with driving, like Miss Standy, but. For that amount of traffic to back up, I see that there's been an accident. I see the ambulance, like you mentioned. I see the dent. But for that amount of traffic to be there, that means that that car, I know you want to finish my thought. This accident's been on the highway what, William? Short time or a long time? A long time. A long time. There's more than one possibility. There's one, more than one way to see a situation. All right, so two things that logically could have happened before that photograph was taken. Sorry, Chris, I think I bumped your leg. All right, what's one thing that could have happened before that photograph was taken? The rain made the car slip when it stopped on the brakes and hit into the car. Okay, well, we have the car crash, so let's go before the car crashing. Okay? So we could say, you're going to write this down. I'm going to take Rebecca's idea. Rain made road slippery. And I'm not writing a complete sentence, so I don't have a capital or a period. All right, so that's one logical event that could have happened. I do a lot of measuring um, informally. Informally is the conversations that I had with the friends during active involvement was the discussion after the active involvement um, during my small group. I can pick up on if they understand it. Um, I write down whether or not my friends in those little spiral journals, <clears throat> whether or not what I saw that they were strong in, whether or not they're still developing. Um, and this is, you know, we're just getting our feet wet with this. Um, out of the box kind of thinking for chronological order, but I'll look at the exit tickets and I'll read each and every one of them. I won't grade them, um, but I'll put feedback on them. All right, readers, if you'll close your books, we'll log in in a minute. We'll log in our reading, but if you'll just turn over your exit ticket. just so you can glance at them. You've already done them, so you don't need to change anything. My group that I worked with had this image. I'm gonna let them talk. William, can you tell us one event that we thought could possibly have occurred before that photo was taken? Uh, the driver might have been driving too fast. So we, we came up with perhaps that this driver was driving too fast and got himself in a pickle, all right? And then Rebecca, what did we think was one logical explanation, what could have happened logically in chronological order after the photograph was taken? Um. We knew the action was an accident, so then what could a reaction be? By, bystanders are wondering how the accident happened and can, can 
addition of those involved. Excellent. So we said, well, maybe all these people that are sitting in this traffic, we're going to call them bystanders. They're not actually standing, but when you're witness to something, you're called a bystander, whether you're standing or sitting. Maybe they're wondering, well, how did the accident happen? How are the people that were involved in the accident? So excellent job for that group. And if you had that photo, um, I, I compliment them. And then I tell them one thing that they can work on as a reader. So we, we call it kind of like a happy face and a delta. One thing you did well, and then one thing that um, you could do as a reader that will strengthen you. And sometimes if a friend never talks, and then t all of a sudden in small group talks and shares answers, and the answers are right on off with that, um, parents see these, I see these, they go back and they read them. And so um, if you know they were really quiet and they didn't participate, I might say, would love to hear your voice next time. I think you're going to have great ideas.